cool. It's full and okay. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Oh, this this setting is making me nervous. Feels like I'm a professor or something. <laughs> um, so I'm Alan. I'm a developer advocate from both uh, PayPal and Braintree. Now, I'm sure many of you may have heard of PayPal, but how many of you have heard of Braintree before you saw this? the word here. <laughs> okay, just a couple of hands, that's good. Uh, I'm not expecting many, um, primarily because Braintree isn't actually launched in Asia yet. Um, it's coming really, 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 really soon, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to sort of give everyone an intro on what it is, um, and it, in terms of payments and how you can integrate payments into uh, your applications. So, a little about, about myself, again, I'm Alan. Um, I'm uh, both for both PayPal and Braintree. And Braintree um, itself is essentially a full stack payments processing uh, uh, platform that enables merchants to easily integrate uh, using uh, Braintree, the, uh, the Braintree APIs. Um, so if you're building a mobile application or a web application, if you're uh, selling a product or a service, um, you can easily accept payments using a variety of payment methods from your customers um, all in one single integration. So one of the difficulties um, with payments, especially if you haven't worked with payments before, is that there's just way too many ways uh, for customers to pay nowadays. Um, even myself and my wallet, I've got like three different credit cards with different banks. I've got Visa, I've got both Visa and American Express. Um, but if you were a developer and you were um, looking into accepting payments from your customers, um, you obviously do not want to work with every single uh, credit card vendor. Um, and not to mention credit cards, you know, we recently saw the uh, release of Apple Pay in North America. Um, and also, if you are interested in accepting Bitcoin as well, you're going to need to integrate with one of the Bitcoin wallets that are out there, for example, Coinbase. Uh, now, this is where Braintree comes into play, uh, where we offer you a single integration uh, where you can accept all of these payments uh, without worrying about how to integrate all of them uh, together. So it's just one single integration, uh, which we call V.0. Um, and it currently accepts uh, PayPal, Venmo, if you're familiar with it, it's a North American uh, payment platform. Uh, Coinbase for Bitcoins, uh, Apple Pay, which we've just recently released uh, the beta version of it. Um, and in the future, if there are any, I mean, no, nobody knows what happens in the future, right? There could be many more future payment methods that are to come. Uh, but if you have uh, V.0 integrated or SDK, or SDK integrated, um, it's as easy as flipping a switch to support a new payment method. Um, and that's what some of our customers in the past have seen um, that integrated before Apple Pay was available. Once it was launched, uh, we basically integrated it in the back end um, and, uh, and all our clients had to do was basically flip the switch in the control panel uh, whether or not they want to accept Apple Pay. Um, so very, very little, uh, if any, source code changes required. Um, so just some of our uh, you know, users from Bank Braintree from all over the world. Um, some of the more known, known ones like Uber, GitHub, um, Airbnb, Slack, for example. Um, if, has anybody used Airbnb here before? A few, okay. So you must have went through the uh, payment process um, from ordering a taxi to actually having it paid. You'll notice that there isn't actually any Braintree branding at all. So no, if, you probably wouldn't even know that it was Brain, it, they were using Braintree as a payments uh, processing platform because that's what it is. Um, we don't have any uh, customer engagement. There are no customer accounts like PayPal has. Um, but uh, it's, it's essentially focused on helping merchants and developers process their payments uh, in the back end. So we don't do any of our branding. So we leave, uh, we, we leave it with the companies themselves that want to brand their apps uh, the way they like it. Oops. Um, so again, it's just one, it's what we call V.0. It's one SDK for accepting all payments. And we support a lot of the native languages. Um, all of our SDKs, um, or the, the versions of the SDKs are all built natively in each of the languages that we support. Um, we cover most of the mobile side with iOS and Android. We've got uh, Windows Phone coming up soon. Um, and we're also supporting JavaScript for all the web applications as well. Um, and on terms of the server languages, we've got uh, most of the most popular server languages covered, like Ruby, PHP, Node.js, um, Python, etc. And to integrate with V.0, um, at least on the client side, there are two different uh, ways to do so. Uh, one is through what we call the drop-in UI. Essentially, we build the UI for you. Um, and if, say, for example, you're uh, building an iOS application. All you need to do is just integrate the, the Braintree iOS library, um, add the library to your project, and then you'll be able to access the view controller, and you can just push it onto your UI stack. 
And similarly for the Android application, we have the screen objects uh, for the, uh, the payment screens. Um, so you don't have to worry about um, you know, adding the buttons, the text fields, um, doing all the te uh, credit card va uh, validations and things like that. Everything's all taken care of for you. And I'll show you a demo of the drop-in uh, UI in just a second. The other one, obviously, is a custom UI. So for companies like Uber or, Airb or Airbnb, who really focuses on their own company branding, uh, we, th all they need to do is just leverage the uh, functions that we provide through the client SDK. Um, and they don't have, then they'll be building their whole uh, credit card form, the whole checkout experience. And they're just using the SDK to create transactions um, against the Braintree servers. And most people I talk to, I, I would first talk about the drop in here just because it's so easy to do. Um, like within minutes, you'll see in one of my demos, within minutes, you can actually have the whole payment uh, processing system all set up ready for your application. Um, and the great thing about the V.0 is that you'll see um, the interface is consistent across both the mobile and uh, web platforms. So if you're uh, providing a cross-platform offering for your customers, um, they don't have to worry about, you, you don't have to worry about inconsistency in terms of the interfaces and how they uh, put in the credit card details and uh, the whole checkout process. It's all consistent uh, as long as you're using the V.0 drop-in APIs. <laughs> And in terms of the overall structure, um, obviously you need a client application uh, to show to your uh, users. And you'll need also a server application um, to be able to serve the client token to your client, as well as uh, execute the actual transactions. So uh, sending the transaction information to Braintree, and then Braintree will actually do the backend execution where they take the funds out of the customer account and then uh, puts it into your account. And this is a uh, high-level overview of how the flow works uh, from a development perspective. Um, so on the left here, you've got your client. Um, the first thing, your client, when your client starts up, it's going to need a client token. And this is generated by the server SDK. Um, it's really, really easy to do that. Um, and it's very similar to the way you build uh, applications that integrate with Facebook or Twitter. Um, you first need an application on the dashboard, on the Facebook, Twitter, and in this case, on the Braintree dashboard. And we'll provide you with the client keys and secrets. Um, that you use to set up your SDKs. So once your client sets up the SDK, you can then uh, show the screen, like the drop-in UI, for whenever you want to charge your customers money. And once they uh, put in the credit card details or they log in through PayPal and they click pay, the SDK generates what we call a payment method nonce uh, for your application. And this nonce is basically a string that represents the payment method that, they, the payment method that they've used. And this is very, very important because you as an application developer don't want to handle all of the sensitive data that your uh, clients are passing through. Uh, because you ha in order to do so, you have to be PCI compliant, uh, payment card industry compliant. And there's a lot of regulations around how you, you know, you've got to be secure in the way you handle uh, that sensitive data. But with the payment method nonce, all you do is you just take it and then send it to the Braintree servers. And then we'll be, because the Braintree servers are uh, PCI compliant, we'll be able to handle all that uh, credit card data for you. Um, in the end, all you really care about is getting money from your, getting paid uh, from your customers to your own, uh, your own accounts. So you send a payment method nonce to the server, and on your server application, there's two things that you have to do. Um, passing the client token to the client, and then also when you get a payment method nonce, you forward it to the Braintree servers using the server side SDK. And it's just one simple function call, um, and it'll take care of everything for you. So uh, before we go to the live demo, how many of you guys are uh, developers or actually actual programmers can read code? OK, just a few of you. Um, so I, I might uh, go really quick um, on the demo. Uh, probably won't go into too much detail on the code. But you will see that I have, um, in, my, in my demo folder here, I've got the server and the client. Uh, so basically, I'm using uh, uh, JavaScript and HTML for my client end. I'm just building a very, very simple web interface. Um, and on the server side, I'm using Node.js. Again, there's tons of different uh, SDKs available. So if you're a Ruby programmer or if you are more comfortable in PHP, we've got SDKs for those as well. So if we just take a look at the code itself. On the server side, um, it's actually just a couple of lines of code um, to be able to set up your payment server. Um, and in the top here, I'm just getting the libraries I need. You can see I'm using the Braintree library. I'm also using Express uh, to define my API uh, routes. And the gateway here is the information that's provided to you by the dashboard. Um, so as I mentioned before, you have to create an application on the Braintree uh, dashboard. And once you have created it, uh, you'll be able to access the control panel, which looks something like this. 
Um, it's you've got a lot of like analytics, uh, sales figures, and things like that. Today I'm not earning any money. Yesterday I've got thirty dollars, uh, mostly due from my testing. Um, but uh, if I go to the account, my user, and then I go to my API keys, you'll notice that this is already assigned to you. And this is the snippet of code that you just need to copy to set up your server-side SDK. So you've got one for every language. Here I'm using Node, and I just need to basically copy that, which I've already done, into here. And that sets up my uh, server-side SDK, the BrainTree SDK. And I have two API routes here, um, which my client needs to access. If you remember from the diagram, what the server needs to do is it needs to uh, send the client token when the client requests it. So I've got one uh, API definition here called get token, um, which I basically call one function within the Braintree SDK, gateway.clienttoken.generate, and then the response that I get, the callback that I get from the function call is basically the client token. Um, so the SDK generates a token for you, and just, you just need to forward that to your client. And then your client will use that token to set up the client-side SDK. The other API is the pay function. Um, so this is when uh, the actual payment is initial, uh, initialized by the uh, user. And then your client will send the payment nonce to the server. And the server basically just takes the nonce and then cr creates it uh, using a, uh, one of the functions in the Braintree SDK called gateway.transaction.sale. And then you specify the amount of money you want to charge, which is $10 in this case. And then the payment method nonce, which is the payment method that the customer has chosen to use. Again, you're not handling any of the data. So from your perspective, you don't know or you don't care whether they're paying with PayPal, with credit card, with Apple Pay, Bitcoin, whatever. Um, you just need to pay, pass that nonce to the Braintree servers and we'll take care of everything for you. So once, um, you know, once uh, the transaction is executed, successful error, you'll get a notified response. Just for the purpose of the demo, I just assume everything is successful because Braintree is reliable. So let me just uh, show you the client side as well. It's a very, very simple interface. Um, actually, I've got nothing in there but just one button that, that says pay me $10. Um, and you'll see here again, I'm, on the client end, I'm not building the UI for the credit card form itself. Uh, what I have is I defined an empty div. So you'll see an empty div tag here, div element, with a reference, an ID to it. So I just need to pass that ID to the client-side SDK, which I do here when I set up the client-side SDK, um, and tell them, this is my ID, the, the, the div ID, and please populate this div element with the credit card form that the user needs, or that I need to display to the user. And you'll see the form in just a bit. And this part here, so this is just basically including the Braintree uh, client-side JavaScript library, and this is uh, basically when the web application or the web page uh, first loads, it's going to send a request to my server to get, the, uh, to get the client token. So you see I'm calling the get token API that I just created. And once I get the token, I need to pass that into the Braintree setup uh, SDK, uh, the function call. So it's a setup and then tell them where I want my form to be populated. So now let's uh, just quickly run the server here. Uh, server folder. So I got my server app, node app. Uh, just run that. So server ready, and let's see how the client looks. So you see, initially it's just a button, and this is where it's getting the client token. Once it gets it, it automatically populates the UI form. So I didn't have to build any buttons, text fields. I didn't have to do any validations to it, um, and I assume no one would probably want. To lend me the credit card here. So I'm just going to use my PayPal account to show you how this works. So I'm just going to log in. It's a very, very clean interface. Agree. And the user will see the payment method that they selected. Now if I go ahead and say, oh, I want to use a credit card instead, I can change the payment method. And I can add a new payment method if I wanted to. I can add a new credit card to it as well. Um, and if you notice, like all the UI that's that's coming in here, it's all pre-baked for you, so you don't have to do any uh, interface building. Um, so once I've got my payment method selected, I just need to click "Pay me ten dollars," and hopefully it's success. There we go, and I can check in the dashboard immediately that uh, I should have my first ten dollars for today, which is right here. <coughs> So that's just the transaction that I made. And if I click on that, I can actually see some of the information that I, that the customer has provided. 
Um, you'll see here the email, I paid through PayPal. The email is different because this is in Sandbox. So no matter what account the user is uh, logging in with the PayPal account, it's always going to be the same uh, email because it's all test data. So it's just a dummy um, uh, email. But if they actually pay with credit card, they'll actually have you know, the last four digits of the credit card information. Um, so you can always just come back to the dashboard, have an overview of your sales and how everything is like, um, and you can search up transactions as well. There are a lot, a lot of other cool features in here. Uh, for example, we have the Vault where you can actually store customer account information. Um, so if you don't want to store it in your own database for whatever reason, you can use the Braintree service to do so. Um, and we also store the customer payment methods as well. So when they come back to, the, to your application, um, they'll have those payment methods all set up ready for them. So they don't have to re-enter in their cre credit card details all the time. Um, and of course, we subs uh, support uh, subscriptions and everything like that as well. So let's go back to the slides. So the next part of this talk um, is I want to talk a little bit about something that I hate uh, whenever I do. I do a lot of online shopping. Um, and some of the, I want to talk about like some of the user experiences that we at Burnish have been focusing on um, that you might not notice by just looking at the credit card form. But if you actually play around with it, um, you'll notice that there's a lot of little things that we put in that really enhances the whole uh, user experience. Because um, we don't all just care about develop developers are an important part of our ecosystem. We care about developers, but also the users as well. Um, if the users don't have a good checkout experience, um, then our merchants aren't going to make any money. Um, so there's, there's a really important um, uh, part on us to make sure that the we get the user experience right. So I wanted just to run through some examples that I've seen um, in some of the online stores that I've been you know, purchasing uh, or I've seen online, um, and some of the things that I really, really hate um, that really turns me off. Um, even if I want to buy something there and, and something's not the way I want it to be, I, I typically just navigate away from the page. So first thing here is hate the forms that, sorry, question, yes. Oh, no, 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 okay, okay. So if you, sorry, if you have any questions, just raise, feel free to raise your hand. A very informal session. Don't have to wait till the end. Um, so the first one that I really hate is forms that don't auto-detect um, the credit card types. So how many times have you gone to, well, let's look at how you can do so uh, with the credit card. Uh, with the credit card digits, you can actually, there is actually a repository on determining the credit card type based on the credit card number that they are uh, submitting. So if I just quickly take a look at the Wikipedia here that I just copied, um, you can basically, fig like as soon as they type in the credit card, you can figure out what um, credit card type they're actually, they're actually using. Instead of having these forms where you have a drop down box and you tell them what credit card you're about to input, right? This is just, you know, inconvenient. It just adds another obstacle in the whole checkout process. Um, and if you're, if you're a business owner and you're a merchant, you're offering, you know, online payments, you'll probably already be, you know, um, very crazy about the whole checkout experience because you know that even just with one flaw in the whole checkout experience can really bring down, you know, a, a huge percentage of uh, potential customers that are actually purchasing items uh, off of your, uh, applications, websites, or mobile applications. And that was from Dell, right? And Dell is a, is a big company, too. I hope, uh, hope I didn't really, hope there's no Dell employees here. But um, also at, like, at Q10, like, you'll have to, when you're actually checking out, you have to actually select uh, the cards that you want to pay with, either MasterCard Visa or JCB, um, et cetera, et cetera. And there are actually a lot of ways that you can um, Build. So I just wanted to show you some of the examples here that you have I have online. And there are open source libraries that you can actually just take in um, and incorporate it into your web application. Like things like um, the jQuery credit card validator here. It, it's got an example form that you can try. And you can see if I, as, I, as soon as I start typing in my first two digits, it's already detected my credit card, right? Like I don't need to really tell what it is. Or if I do like a 5-1, it's a MasterCard, right? This is really just the very. It, it's very, very. Um, it's very small. It may, it may. You may see it as a very small factor, but in the end, it makes a whole lot of difference when the users are actually going through that whole checkout process. Um, and there's another um, uh, example as well, if you'd like to see afterwards. I'll, I'll have the slides up uh, on my uh, slide share as well. Uh, and that's why I like Braintree, right? So we, we take a lot we, we take a lot of notice on the details that we provide. So if I went back to my uh, my client page, uh, 
And if you take a look at the credit card format, that's what we do as well. So with the credit card number, as soon as you, you know, start typing your number, that's when we do the, uh, when we detect the credit card. On the right side, you'll see, yeah, you'll see Visa and you'll see like MasterCard as well. That's what we do. The other thing is uh, formatting dates as it's shown on the credit card. So we all know like on our credit cards, we have typically in the exp expiration date formats, it's, it's usually a month, 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 and year, year. So like a 0715 or so, so forth, so on and so forth. But there are sites that make you have to pick in your dates. I mean, it's not hard to convert that number into, a, into the month, into the actual month, but it's just another um, layer that of, um, of a trouble that they have to go through. And there's other examples here as well. Like, it's it, it's good that they're using the numbers, but they're using drop downs, right? Sometimes, a lot of times, your your the first field you put in is your cardholder name, and then you're used to pressing tab to go to the next field so you can start typing your expiration date. But they're making you take use your mouse or use your pointer to to go through the drop downs, which is another um, not a bad experience, but another small intricate um, trouble that they have to go through. And with Braintree here in our credit card form, um, we, do, we basically have, you just in, need to input the numbers. So if I just start putting in 02, and then a year, year, obviously that's not valid too far off. Um, but if you say, if you're entering a month like, um, uh, 12, let's do the phallic one, and five, and that's okay. So we, and, and you'll notice we all, we're also showing the labels here as well. So just to remind the user of what they're inputting in that field and what the format is like. So these are just some of the little things that we pay attention to. And the other one is not valuing the credit card number. This is one of the ones I really, really hate. So you go through this um, online checkout form, you're putting in your first name, last name, your shipping address, your credit card details, and you press, uh, you know, you, you click pay, and that or checkout, and then they go, and then they start doing the validation on the fields, and they go, your credit card details are wrong, and then sometimes they even reset the fields, um, making you refill them uh, again and again. So don't ask. Let's let's concentrate on on the credit card form. Don't ask me why I'm at this website, but if you look over here as well, um, you've got your credit card uh, fields here. Oh, I probably have the wrong image in here. Let's see here, please provide. So in here, there again, there. So after, so, so this is the image after I clicked OK. After I put in my credit card number, I click OK, and then they show me a pop-up box telling me, you know, provide your, uh, please, please provide a valid credit card, and then they make me enter in my credit card details again. Um, but you can actually do all of this inline in the text box field itself, um, so you don't have to wait until they actually submit their orders. Um, and this is done by what we call the Lung algorithm, and you'll you'll find a lot of information like this uh, on the wiki page. Um, but essentially, there's a, there is a formula. Given a credit card number, you can actually uh, figure out whether or not it's a valid credit card number. If you just follow the steps, take the original number, reverse it. It's a really, really weird um, algorithm. But you reverse it, you double every second number, you add it all together, and if it's divisible by 10, then it's a valid credit card number. So if this is all available already, I just don't understand why people aren't using it um, to validate it in line. Um, so th that's just another. I mean, the, the number itself already gives a lot of information for you in order to calculate things like this. Um, and there are some websites that actually don't even do any validation for you, like this Office Depot here. Um, they've got this little description here telling you to please enter your credit card numbers without spaces or dashes, right? They've got this really, really strict format that you, as a, as a user, you have to follow um, if you want to move on with this order form. And some things like this, again, put in an invalid credit card number and you click add your card, and this is at Amazon. Um, you click add your card, and then that's when they go, there's a problem with your credit card, and you have to revisit them. And with our credit card form, we, we try to um, make it less cumbersome, uh, troublesome. Um, so as, you, as soon as you enter in your credit card number, if it's a valid one, it's okay, we don't do anything. But if you put in an invalid one, that's when we, you know, tell you and you, you know, there's something wrong with your card, uh, credit card, and you better, you know, double check that number again. So these are all done in line um, without them having to find out um, at a later point in time. 
And the other one is also not keeping labels visible at all times. Now this is a, a slightly less um, of a problem, but it's also something I, I go through a lot as well, especially when you go to the Apple Store, they do that as well. Um, they have these uh, text holder, placeholder text um, in each of the fields, but sometimes when you start typing in them, you might, or when you click on them, as soon as you click on them, the text is gone, and you kind of forget what you're supposed to put it, in, what you're supposed to put in that field. Um, and what we do with our uh, credit card forms is that, for example, once they start inputting the credit card numbers, we move that placeholder text um, and just right above the credit card number, the entry, so that it reminds them of what they're inputting. And it's especially important for things like uh, expiration dates when you when you want to tell them what the exact format it is, um, so that they can still follow through. And, and to keep in mind as well, like so everything that's provided in those uh, drop-in UI forms that I just showed you, um, they're all provided for you. So if you're implementing any, if you're implementing it on iOS, on Android, uh, or on the web, um, all of those you know, little key um, benefits are already provided for you. So it does all of the cal uh, validation checks, the credit card checks, the expiration checks. Um, so you don't have to worry anything about that, and you can concentrate on um, how you can grow your business and, and acquire more uh, customers. Um, so last but not least, um, are, are, are any startups here, startup founders, or employees part of startups? Okay, so there's this, um, there's a initiative that we have at PayPal uh, and at Braintree as well. Uh, we call it the, the Startup Blueprint. I'm not sure if any of you have heard of it, but if you haven't, it's essentially a program where uh, uh, we invite startups to enroll into our program, and they'll be um, they'll get benefits like uh, being able to waive off transaction fees uh, off of their um, uh, branch or PayPal integrations. Um, so it's free. For, the fees are waived um, up to 18 months um, and up to $50,000 USD in PayPal or $100,000 USD for Braintree. Um, not to mention, we also have mentors as well. Um, so. Every startup that's uh, enrolled in this Blueprint program will have assigned a uh, PayPal employee um, uh, or a Braintree employee that's part of our um, startup uh, evangelist team. Um, and they'll be able to help you out with uh, whether it's uh, business topics or uh, technical topics. Uh, we'll be able to have consulta consultation hours. So you can ask questions at any time you like. Um, you can do it through email, phone call, or, or even Skype if you prefer. Um, and we have dedicated customer service. So if you, can, if you have any uh, account issues, um, you can also feel free to give us a call and we'll be able to help you out immediately. So this, the, the whole initiative for the startup program is really to help um, grow early stage startups. So there are, there are two uh, criteria for this program. So the first one is that the startup has to be uh, less than five years old um, and the annual revenue cannot be more than uh, one million dollars USD. Uh, so it's targeted to very early stage startups who are still trying to focus on growing their business um, and we just want to take you know one headache out of their whole uh, the whole strategy. And that's all I have for today. Um, yeah, I'm going to be here for the rest of the day as well, so if anyone has any questions, uh, I'll be downstairs. Oh, we've got some now. Okay, cool. So, my understanding is that Braintree um, can save any kind Yes, that's right. And then after that, um, say the next time the, the, the same customer or the same mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once they, so the first time they actually go through the process, uh, they, there, there is a uh, field where they, you can get their consent to allow them to use the same payment method for future purchase, uh, purchases. Um, and everything, all the payment methods are saved in the vault, um, and you'll be able to get access to it as well. So you can provide those on the screen for them to select um, if they'd like, and they can definitely come back and use the same uh, payment method uh, without having to going through all the, the credit card forms and things like that. Yeah. Is it secure? Sorry? Is it that secure? I mean, like, you are you have their credit card information already on their vault. Mm -hmm. So what's stopping them from just uh, recycling the... Oh, no, but I'm, so, 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 I mean, there are regulations and compliance, you think, that are sort of governed uh, by uh, different industries around the world, and we are, like, compliant to those. Um, and that's sort of, like, I guess, our way of showing how we are taking care of that sensitive data correctly uh, for the customers. Um, I can tell you it's very secure, but... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes? Did you check out any locations that are associated with this uh, Yes, so that's another point. So, um, 
it depends on uh, on what the merchant likes. So if you want it to be, if you want it to actually um, put in the security code as well, um, that's a good point. We can choose not to. Yes, you can choose not to. So uh, uh, give me another chance as well. I, I just forgot to show you this um, within the control panel. So if you log into your control panel, you can actually um, enable, like I mentioned, right? You can just quickly, easy talk, easily toggle different payment methods you want. So you can accept uh, Venmo or you can toggle to accept uh, Apple Pay, and then when we have Bitcoin integration, there will be a field in there as well. So it's really, really simple. So when you were talking about the CVV, things like the security code, um, you can actually, because I had it uh, just for testing, I had it uh, disabled, uh, but you can actually just enable it. If you click Save, and then um, the next time I open up this application, Then it, I'll have the CVV code in there as well. So, um, so I'm not exactly familiar of how like risky or not risky it is without with or without. Um, but I just know that you like if it's a, it's available for the merchants if they need or if they require. It. Yeah. So even. Yeah, so we have, um, so it's similar to PayPal as well. We have a process for doing uh, refunds. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think what happens is you submit a refund case, um, and then it gets reviewed uh, you know, either by Braintree or by PayPal, um, and then you'll get notified what happens throughout the case. Yeah. Um, so as you've seen, like without even any changes in the, in the client source code, you can actually configure a lot of the things that are shown on the credit card forms, um, just through the control panel itself. Um, I can't disable uh, PayPal in Sandbox for some odd reason, but if I, if I had it in production um, and I didn't want PayPal, um, I didn't want to accept PayPal, then all you need to just do is disable PayPal, and then in this credit card form, I won't have that PayPal button in there, and I'll just have the credit card. So you'll strictly be accepting credit cards. Yes? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So um, in here, if you go to the control panel where you can actually set up all the subscription, you can do it through API as well, but much easier with the, um, with the uh, panel here. I'm not sure if you can see the text, but in here there's recurring billing. So you can actually set up the plans on how much you want to charge with different types of tiers. Um, so the plan ID, name, description, price, etc. cetera. Um, if you want a trial period, if you want to offer a trial period, um, and you, do, you can do a lot of cool things like discounts as well. So you can say, you know, the first, uh, it's very common to have uh, merchants say the first three months are free or the first three months are half off. Um, you can actually set up those uh, discounts as well and apply it to those plans. Yeah. For the, uh, for the API keys, can you limit, for example, the IP that is coming from and limit the uh, functionality of the IP um, That I'm not entirely sure of. Uh, but I can follow up with you offline and get you the answer. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the so. Yeah. Yeah. So the the interface that you saw here, which is the web interface, it essentially looks very much the same on iOS. Actually, the screenshot I showed you in the presentation here um, is exactly how it looks on uh, on iOS. So it has the PayPal button if you enable or disable it. Again, this is the same, like if you do anything with the control panel, it'll affect the changes in the, in the client side and you don't have to redeploy your client, you don't have to resubmit it to the app stores or anything. Everything is just done on the fly. Uh, so the user has to enter that, they can't just keep the card? Oh, um, the card you, the card yeah, yeah, with the card I.O. With the PayPal SDK, yeah, you have the card I.O. I don't think we have that integrated in uh, Braintree yet, but I'm sure it's something that we can look into. Yes, yes, it's very similar. Yeah. We have the view controllers and then you just yeah, need to. The view controllers. Yeah, yeah, that's right. What is the Sorry? Um, so, with pay so Braintree isn't uh, launched yet. Um, right now, you can play around with the sandbox, but you'll notice you can't move it to production. Um, so, all you can do, right now, you can test your integrations, and when it, once it launches, you can move it to production by just flicking the switch. Um, so, we don't have the transaction fees announced yet, but in terms of PayPal, I believe it's 3.9%. Um, I would expect something similar. Uh, with, with 
Uh, we don't have an official date, or I can't say anything about the official date, but it's coming really, 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 really soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you can actually do all your integrations using Sandbox, and then when it's ready, you, should, you just flip it over to production. Uh, no, not in, not in production yet. It's only available in North America and in Europe. Yeah, not yet in Asia. Uh, well, in Asia, within Asia Pacific, it's available in, uh, in uh, Australia. But it's coming very soon to the rest of the world. So, other than the um, no, not, not any other major requirements that I know of, but um, if you're interested, you just need to go to blueprint.paypal.com and there's a link for you to request an invite. Um, I have a teammate that uh, actually leads the Blueprint program in Asia that I could connect you to if you're really, really interested as well. Um, he's just, he, he's in the States right now, that's why he wasn't here, but I can definitely connect you to him if any of you guys are interested. Okay, cool. That's good. Okay, cool. There's nothing else. Thank you guys for joining.